face. Can you look at Mama? What did you do to your face? Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm a full-time animal artist. I'm a mother, a color fanatic, and to help me manage my stress this year, I'm creating art every single day for 10 minutes, and I invite you to join me. The winner of last month's giveaway is Nancy Nichols, who requested a bunny rabbit. So we're gonna jump ahead into Easter right now. And for this month's giveaway, I'm gonna give one person who comments down below within the next 24 hours, one whole month in the online Animal Art Masterclass for free. I'll announce the winner in the next tutorial. And lastly, I'll be opening my brand new print shop on the first day of spring, that's March 20th. All right guys, let's get painting. can access this individual traceable outline in a link down below or if you'd like to access all my old and upcoming YouTube channel traceables, reference photos, and material lists, you can find all those in one place in my new Dachshund tier link down below. Now for today's creative quiet time verse, it comes from Ephesians 2:10, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. I mean, talk about good news. I don't know about you, but I think we need some really good news right now. So what this verse is saying is not only does God call us his artwork, crafted by his perfect and skillful hands, the ultimate artist, but also it's in our design, each one of us, to have a specific blessed purpose. So he's not saying for us to do good works to get into heaven. That's already been established by Jesus on the cross. Our salvation comes from our acceptance of Jesus and what he's done, not by what we've done or can do by ourselves. So what's being said here is that we were all given specific gifts and resources to serve him and to do good works here on earth. Work that is satisfying, is challenging, is fun, and is super unique to us. And just think about this for a second. The same guide who made the stars, who made the ocean, who made the gigantic Grand Canyon also made you. And even before you were born, he knew exactly what he was going to make when he made you. So as we prepare for this painting, I want to pause for time of prayer. Let's take a minute to pray for this world, including the people of Ukraine, the families, the children, what they're going through, but also all the rest of the people who are struggling, suffering in their own unique situation. Now we're going to be doing something a little unusual. We'll just be using white to paint the entire background above the blanket and behind Mr. Bunny. I'm using my size six Arteza flat brush. And like I always say, if you haven't heard me say, I use the golden brand fluid white paint. That's the only white paint that I buy. My colored paints, I like to have a little bit thicker viscosity and I get the thick and medium body paint by Master's Touch. I also love Arteza. I am a fan of Chocola and also sometimes I'll use Windsor & Newton, but primarily I will go with my Master's Touch.
right, so while we let that white paint dry, we're going to work on our blanket. We're going to use Prisma Violet. You can also use Violet. And I'm using, by Master's Touch, it's just called Purple. That's literally the name of the paint color, and it's much lighter. So I'll be mixing those two colors and a little bit of white. So still using my Arteza size 6 flat brush with Prisma Violet, Purple, and a little bit of white. Now we're not going to be using this color to paint in the entire blanket, just in the little shadows. So where the blanket is folding into the bunny, where we see those sketch lines, that's where we'll be applying this color. We want to be very generous with this first stage where we're adding our darkest purple. So if you watch me, you'll see I'll be going over the lines but also filling in some areas. Now make sure you mix up enough of this color because on the outer edge of the lower part of our canvas we'll be applying this color and especially our sides. So make sure you have enough mixed up for those steps. Now, if you'd like to learn how to paint your household pets and or accept pet portrait commissions, maybe part-time or even full-time, I invite you to join my online animal art masterclass. It was animal art therapy that really helped me in my own battle with addiction, depression, and anxiety. And so this is something that I really strive to help creatives do the same and master acrylic, pet, and wildlife art. I welcome beginner, intermediate, and advanced level artists. It's a fun, loving, and very colorful environment where students get access to my traceables, my old and new tutorials, my business courses, including my new pet portrait commission course. So if this would bless you or a friend in need, all the links to my online animal art masterclass are down below. Let's get back to painting this bunny. Alright, so here we go working down around the lower part of our canvas on the left bottom and right lower sides. I'm just going to be applying this with wispy brush strokes back and forth along the sides, both the actual sides of the canvas and on the sides of what our surface that we're seeing. And you'll notice I'll be like boxing in this area, like each little fold, little section of the blanket. I'm not trying to paint in the entire blanket because I don't want to lose these folds, but definitely most of it. And then our next phase will be adding the medium values for the white parts of our blanket. Now I just want to know, it's really important that you either have, you're working wet into wet for the next stage so that the paint on your canvas is not completely dry but it's still wet for you to blend the medium values or you can just have wet paint on your paint palette that you can add more of to blend in those lighter values. Okay, so it, it can be either or or both but you don't want everything dry on your paint palette and on your canvas at this point.
All right, so I hope you still have some more dark purple left because we're going to be adding gobs of white into it for the next stage for our medium values. So in a second, I'll be adding lots of white into the side of my purple paint mixture. This will be making a much lighter purple that we'll use to fill in all the rest of the white on our blanket, as well as blending that into the dark purple that we've already applied. Now you can't blend unless it's wet. You can't blend even if it's tacky. You need it to be damp. Now if your canvas is dry, that's okay. Just add more of your purple mixture into that area where you're adding the lighter purple so that right in that area where it joins from dark to light you can just blend that in with your damp brush so what i often say is have a clean damp brush meaning you've washed out your brush you've dabbed it not dry but just dabbed it so that it's not sopping wet on your paper towel or cloth and then you pick up a small amount of paint on your brush so you have those damp bristles that aren't sopping wet and they aren't dried off then you have that small amount of paint and voila, perfect blending. You can very easily move your brush back and forth. And when you need it, when it starts to pull on your brush, that's when you either need to pick up more paint or wash out your brush entirely and get it clean and damp again. Now to add even more dimension to this blanket, to really make it look like this bunny is sitting in the center of a blanket, I'm going to create two more little bumps in the far background just to the left and right of the bunny. Now this is over top the white just behind that dark purple layer. Now it's actually above the dark purple line, but we see it as behind it. All right, so now I'm gonna take this time to smooth out some of the lines, not all of them, but a few of them. And that I'll use my medium purple and the dark purple we started with. Alright, great. So let's let our purple blanket dry for a little bit and I'm going to wash up my brush thoroughly and I'm going to mix up a dark pink. So I'm going to use my permanent red and a little bit of white. We don't want this to be a red, we want this to be pretty strong dark pink.
All right, let's set aside our flat brush and move to our size one Arteza round brush. I am simply just gonna grab some black and fill in the eyes, nose, and mouth. So that means just filling the eyes and outlining the nose and outlining the mouth. Now I have to note, this is the size one round brush from Arteza's detail brushes. The, and the next step, we'll use the size one round brush from the variety pack, where it has all different types of brushes like flat brushes, fan brushes, cat's tongue brushes, but the detail brushes are all really tiny. All right, so next I'm gonna to move to my size one round brush from the variety pack with a mix of brushes, not from the little detail pack brushes. And we're gonna work on the bunny fur. So this is a little bit more challenging than what we've done so far. We are gonna build up in layers from dark to light. And I noticed that the most difficult part for me was around the face. So just take your time. Make sure you also take your time in mixing colors. I'm going to mix up a medium gray. This isn't a dark gray. This is right there in between medium and light using black and white. It's better to go though too dark than too light. You have to do a lot more work to move backwards if you start too light than too dark. So if you're leaning more on the dark gray side as opposed to that medium gray, that's okay. So what I'm doing right now is looking for all the areas where I see this dark to medium gray in a reference photo on the bunny fur. Now we changed up, I changed up the ears, so we're not really going to be paying too much attention to the reference photo bunny ears. What's going to happen though is there's going to be a shadow created from both ears, especially the one on the right because it's kind of folded over. There's just not as much light getting there as there is around the chest or the around the front of the face. We'll also be getting lots of shadows underneath the belly and around the feet and a little bit below the bow tie and also around those lips. There's just this cute little dark gray part right around the lips that I just love. Also, the reference photo shows that the light source is hitting the bunny from the right and the upper right. But in this painting, I made the light source coming front on. So wherever the light source is hitting first, that's going to be the lightest. The opposite side of that is going to be the darkest. Now take notice to how I'm applying paint. In some areas, I'm applying these bold, thick lines where I'm using most of the bristles pushing down on my brush, and others I'm just using the tip of my brush, just doing little, very gentle dabs. In other areas, just like this little area above the nose, around the bridge of the nose, I'm doing clusters of lines with a little bit of paint at the tip of my brush. My goal isn't just to cover up the white, but it's also to start getting that texture, that furry look, and we do that by clustering lines with our first layers. We also wanna be very generous in this first layer 
adding more than we need, but still not losing our guidelines. That traceable outline is still gonna help us apply those medium and light values. Now I'm just going to mix up some more of the same color. I'm not doing any changes with color right now. Now very often, but not always, I get to test out colors and try giving a painting idea I have a try before I start filming it. Not all the time though, like in this case. And even when I do that, I still make mistakes. And the mistake I kept making was getting the light source wrong around the snout. And what you're going to see in just a minute is how I went about fixing my mistakes when I was trying to alter the light source in my painting making it different from the reference photo. And that can be tricky sometimes. If you do do this in any of your future animal paintings, you have to make sure that every part of the animal is consistent with where that light source is located. If your light source is coming from the right, you should have more shadows on the left. But if your light source is coming from the front, you actually wanna have more shadows on the left and right back areas of that animal. Now, of course, in both cases, there are exceptions, but areas getting hit by the light first are gonna be the lightest, and the areas getting very little light or no light will be the darkest values. So here's where I wanted to start with my medium values, going a little bit lighter, adding more white into that previous gray. But then I decided to bring that back to the first gray we were using, so I pulled in more black, still getting my, my colors mixed up because I was looking at the reference photo, not making sure that this area actually should be lighter. But bear with me here, good definitely came out of this mistake because it made me realize that I, to add more contrast, I can just go a little bit darker. And that's exactly how I got out of this little brain fart here. I added some black into my gray and went back to those darkest areas. I even switched to my size one liner brush to very carefully do little dabs of these shadows around the eyes beneath the ears. And what the heck, before we move on to our light gray or in our medium grays, I'm going to go in with black and touch up those eyes to try and make them as symmetrical as possible. Okay, I'm going to wash up my brush and now move back to my size one round brush from the variety pack, the larger one, 
And now is time that we're gonna add lots of white into that gray. I'm just pulling in a little bit of that gray. Now be careful here because our final highlights will be just white. So we don't want this too close to white. We want this just a little bit lighter, but it needs to be light enough where it stands out over top the gray that we had. And remember, that's not a real dark gray, it's a medium gray, but it's our darkest value in this painting. And it's this gray we'll use to fill in all the rest of the white that we have in the bunny fur. And it's this layer that we're gonna hug those the previous gray that we applied. This is the color that we're gonna use to further create that furry texture. We're gonna cover up more of that canvas white. And then we're also uh, gonna overlap some of the previous gray, but not all of it. Just enough to help us really define these body parts of the bunny and make sure that we can create that furry look. All right, so while I'm right here about to apply this color to the left side of the face, I actually only apply it to the lower left. But to save you bunches of time, bring this color up more like we have it on the right side, okay? Because again, that light source is coming from the front in this painting, not on the right like our reference photo. So on the more on the left of that left cheek, we need this medium value there. Now we're going to find those itty bitty little details with this color using our Arteza size one liner brush. I love this brush just getting into those tiny little areas and what we'll be doing is going around the nose. It's kind of like a light outline around the nose, around the mouth and up above the top of the eyes. Now very carefully, I'm gonna cluster lines that frame the left cheek. Next, I'm going to work on that little tiny shadow just around the indent along the mouth. So where the nose and the mouth connects, I'm going to get that dark gray area. It's going to be pretty dark here. Now as I'm adding this dark gray, it's mixing in with the white so it's getting a little lighter and going back to the original gray that we started with on the bunny fur. And so with that gray, I'm going to just do some touch-ups making it look more furry with lots of lines in certain areas. Like right above the nose, there's two spots above the nose actually, 
and I'm just doing short and long clusters of lines. It gets a little longer around the cheeks, but it's short on the very bridge of the nose. I'm gonna wash up my brush and make sure it's clean and damp, and I'm gonna make an even darker gray that I'm gonna put under the belly and to the left and right sides of the belly. And by doing that, that's when I notice we need a few more medium values along the legs. So that's the medium gray right there between the lightest gray we have already and our darkest. So I mixed up a color that's right there in between those values and I added them to both the left and right sides of both limbs. Now with short and long clusters of lines, I dab my brush up along the sides of the legs as well as underneath the bow tie and along the chest. This is where we don't even have to blend, we're actually just clustering lines and that actually helps us still soften those bold sharp areas in between the really darks and the really lights. All right, so you ready for some color? Because right now, using my cat's tongue brush, you can use any brush for this because we're just going to be mixing up colors. I'm going to mix up random colors that I plan to add to the bow tie as well as the blanket. Now, I use yellows, oranges, and blues. I also have a green here that I mixed up but I ended up not using, but you can add fewer or more or different colors. The colors that I'm using is sky blue and white, cadmium yellow and white, Indian yellow and white, the color red light, that's what it's called, red light and white, and then I also mixed up olive green and white, but I ended up not using that. So I'm going to mix all those colors up with my cat's tongue brush, Arteza brush, and then with my size one round brush, I'm going to go in on the blanket and create little dots. So I went with a yellow dot theme over top the purple blanket, the complementary colors there, and I also included orange because I knew that would complement the blue bow tie that I was going to eventually paint. And I also made all these dots the same size. Now you're welcome to do cool designs, maybe like Easter eggs. You're welcome to use entirely different colors, like I said, or circles or dots, different shapes. I just want you to have fun and to allow yourself to be creative. Don't be afraid to experiment with designs and have fun. Side note here, I'm adding my lightest dots, which is this cadmium yellow and white, to the lightest light purple areas on the blanket, okay? And then the medium value areas, I'm going to add the Indian yellow and white mixture, and then the darkest areas where we're, has, we have those lines and the shadows in closer to the bunny, I'll be using my red light and white mixture. I'm going to wash up my brush and move to my Indian yellow and white mixture.
Okay, so I'm going to wash out my brush and move to my red light and white mixture for the darkest areas on our blanket. Now I'm going to wash out my brush and I'm going to add a few more of my cadmium yellow and white dots on the blanket on the lightest purple areas of the blanket. Now I'm going to add some more dimension to these dots and where they're placed. I'm going to go in with just white and on the lightest yellow dots, getting the most amount of light, I'm going to add a touch of white to them. And then I'm going to mix up red light and Indian yellow. And that'll be that in-between color for any of those dots that's laying right there in between the dark purple and medium purple. Alright, so here I go. I'm going to mix up Indian yellow and my red light and any of the dots that are laying on a dark purple line or on the areas that we blended in that are a bit medium to dark purple. That's where we'll add this color to those dots. So now I want to get a real rich yellow color. So I'm going to mix up cadmium yellow with just the smallest amount of my white. And that's going to be the color that I choose a few dots in my blanket to add this to. And that's going to be dots that are sitting on the medium value purple. And I'll also add a few more dots with this color as well. Great, so now our blanket is finished, we're going to work on that bow tie. 
Now I'm going to use sky blue and white. I'm going to remix this color because I want it darker than the blue I have right now on my paint palette. That's just a little too light and we want to start from dark and then move up to light. So I'm going to make this with just a little bit of white and lots of sky blue. And I'm going to outline the darkest areas, so basically all the lines that we see on this bow tie and then some on the left and right sides of that knot, then around that knot and definitely underneath that bunny where that fur is just falling over the bow tie. Now I hope you have more white. We use lots of white in this tutorial and I'm gonna add some more to my paint palette. I'm gonna also wash out my brush and add in more white to this blue mixture that we've just been using. And that's gonna be the next layer that we use to fill in the rest of the white on our bow tie while also defining the folds of the bow tie. So I'll use this, I would say light blue to fill in the knot and then I'll use it to separate the top and bottom part of the bow tie on the left and right. And for that area, I'll definitely be covering a lot of the previous blue that we started with, but not covering it all up. The important thing is to leave a line for the fold on the left and right of the bow. And now I'll add even more white to this blue and paint the furthest left and right sides of the bow. Just what left of white we have on our canvas. And because we're working in such a small area, this is likely wet for you. We can blend it very easily right on our canvas. Now, if it's not right where these two colors meet, just pull in more of that previous blue. It's time to work on those glasses. I'm gonna move back to my size one liner brush. This is the best brush I'd recommend for painting glasses at any time. I'm gonna go on with just black and I'm gonna work on the rounded bottom part of the glasses first. I'm gonna try and make those as symmetrical as I can. And this is gonna cut into the top of the bunny fur and leave a gap in between the bridge of the nose. I'm trying to just make these open C's, upside down open C's, as even as possible. And if you're scared, that's okay. I'm always a little nervous when I do this. You just got to do it scared and you can easily paint over it. Acrylic dries and then you can just add more layers over top. I want to bring the glasses up so that you actually can't see it underneath that right ear. And then I want to bring it up a little higher on the left side because, of course, that ear's not covering it. I'm going to create a C that's going the opposite direction to join it at the middle. And then I'll create not a straight line, but more of a curved line at the top. It's not quite straight. And I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. And then I'll have like a little cap, a little part sticking out on the left side of the glasses. We don't see that on the right again because of that right bunny ear. Just focus on symmetry and the outline of those glasses first and then you can go back and thicken up those lines. 
Now at this point in my head, I was thinking I was going to go in with a, a different color and thicken the creative border around the glasses with a different color. But then I gave myself some time to decide on that. I worked on the whiskers. So if we painted white whiskers, we wouldn't see them over top or white background. So I mixed up a dark to medium gray. So that's not the darkest gray we've used, a little lighter than that. And with the same brush and three little lines on both sides, on the left and right sides of the cheek, I just created these long wispy whiskers. And don't worry so much about it being perfect. You can actually go on with your white background and cut into the whiskers to, to kind of like fine tune them, make them more straight. And you never know where your so-called mistakes will take you. Very often we can learn something new and also gain that confidence by problem solving. And that's when I decided to keep this a simple painting and just continue on with black to thicken up the outline, the border of the glasses. All right, finally, so before we move on to our touch-ups, we need to add those final highlights of white. I'm gonna go back to my size one round brush and the area is getting the most amount of light, which is the top of the head and then the front of the face. So the front of the face and the front of the legs and chest, those are gonna be the areas that are getting the most light. And you remember me saying that on the left side of the cheek, that's underneath that left, those left whiskers, it's lighter for you because I had mentioned I was going off a reference photo making that that doesn't look quite right and that's what was throwing me off for quite a while in this end part of the tutorial. So coming down from the bottom of the left cheek all the way up to the nose should be more of these white highlights. I'm adding them to the sides of the bunny which is right but we need a little bit right up there on the left side right by the nose and mouth. So I'll add this to the forehead, on the tops of the bunny ears, along the chest, along the legs. And just like our previous layers, I'm not trying to cover up the other grays. I'm doing little dabs, still overlapping them, but not entirely covering them up. Now I want to say here, less is more. I ended up adding too much of this white 
And then I had to add a lot more of my medium values to fix it up in the next stage. And the next bit, I mix up a medium gray to fix that. So be very intentional. Don't go too fast. And just make sure you have the light source consistent on all the parts of the bunny. All right, so here we go with our touch-ups. We will be repeating the steps that we've already applied to complete our painting. And I'm gonna go back and forth. I really, like I said, I struggled on that face between our medium gray and the darkest gray we used in this painting. And so with my size one liner brush, that's what I'll be doing. And eventually at the end, once I've turned off my camera, that's when I see that the left side of the cheek is where we need that highlight. Like right here, it could be finished just by doing that, but I kept working and working and working the face and that's all it needed. So for you, if you need to pause this video and step back and look at your painting, look at it as a whole, maybe you need some lighter values or maybe you need some more darks or maybe not all the parts of the bunny are consistent with the light source coming from the front and above. Maybe you need to add a few more of the lines to create that furry texture. Or maybe you need to make the glasses a little bit more symmetrical. Whatever it is, make this painting your own. If you're not in love with it, just treat this as a study, something that you learned from. But if not and you love it, awesome! Those are both wins. So from here to the end, I'll be doing some touch-ups to this bunny fur. And then I'll sign my work. But some important things that I want to point out is I add a little bit more of my medium values to the outer parts of the bunny's belly. You might already have it like this, but underneath the left cheek whiskers, it's lighter. It has my medium and light values of gray there. That bunny ear on the right is really casting a shadow on the right eye and along that cheek, so we want to keep it relatively dark under there. And just pay close attention to the direction of the fur we have fur that's coming in towards the mouth around the cheek. So that fur is pointed in towards the nose and mouth. We also wanna keep shadows underneath the ears pretty dark, like on the actual border of the ears. And lastly, I make sure that outline around the nose is real light. It's like a light gray, almost white.
All right, creatives, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I wish you a blessed Easter. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.